Hi, welcome. Another episode. Episode 7, we left it. John had just met Jum. And uh, they'd had lunch up at Pratamac Hill. Whatever it's called. First encounter with each other. And a couple of hours chatting away. Anyway, they exchanged phone numbers. And uh, Jim actually said this was lovely. Uh, meeting someone in the similar boat to me that had lost family and uh, was single and uh, not like so many of these men whenever she goes anywhere that just ask and want stupid things, as she put it. And he's like, yeah, it was breath of fresh air. Off they went back home. And they agreed that in a couple of days they would uh, do lunch again. He's home. First person he tells is Triple X's cleaner. She's not happy. She's missing her opportunity. He's met a woman who's really nice, who could jump in and take all his money before Triple X even gets a chance out of the blocks. So she knows she's got to move really quick now. And he's told her that he's meeting this lady again in two days. He's off to the pub. He's going to see his boys and tell his boys. So Triple X is like, starts to plot. Off he goes to the pub, tells all the boys, and they're like, well, okay, so you've met a woman in Thailand, in Pattaya, Jomtian. And she dresses nice, speaks nice. This could be great. And then, they, of course, they tell him all the scary stories about girls that maybe want your money and play every trick in the book to get the money off you. And, as usual. <laughs> and he listens to them and he's, okay, yep. Yeah, thanks for warning me and all this. And he says, well, we're just having lunch. It's nothing else. But she's a really nice lady. I'm getting to um, exercise and I've met a lady. And they're like, great. He has a few drinks. And he's getting a bit fed up. They're all, you know, their, their sort of attitude to women and everything. He's like, mm, I'm going home. Heads back. Triple X is gone. Next morning, he's going to keep doing the exercise at the same time. Off he goes. Walks up the beach and sees Jim. How are you? They stopped for a couple of minutes. And he said, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Where do you fancy going? And she's like, well, let's meet at the same place. And then um, there's a couple of places near there we can walk to. And uh, he says, okay. She says, two o'clock? Okay. See you tomorrow at two o'clock. Maybe see you in the morning when exercise. Okay. He gets back that day and Triple X is there. She looks a bit different. She's got different clothes on. She put a skirt on. Seems like maybe she's got a bit of makeup on. And she's like, oh, come on, John. You still need some more clothes and uh, you were gonna get a second pair of shoes. Let's go shopping. And he's like, okay, he's got nothing to do this day. Um, and he says, okay. Off to the shopping malls, a couple of hours grab some food, come back. As soon as they're back, he's got some new clothes. So she says, look, let me iron those and put them in the cupboard. She irons all the new clothes, irons them all, puts them all in the cupboard. And it's getting on past lunchtime. It's sort of getting on for mid afternoon. And John is, is happy. He's thinking, I'm going to have a shower and I'm going to have a, a, an afternoon nap. And he heads off into the shower. Triple X is, is still in that small bungalow. Now, she sees this opportunity that she's gonna have to move quick, otherwise he's gonna be off with that other woman. And what she's about to do is a big gamble. Big gamble. What do you think she does? Um, he's in the shower if the door's locked it's only a little coin to click the 
lock. You guessed it, she strips off in his bedroom. All her clothes off, doors not locked, walks into the shower, bathroom, and presents herself in front of John, who's in the shower, who turns around and sees her. And I mean, she's pretty, pretty woman. She's there, naked in front of him and she's about to head straight into the shower. <laughs> now, a lot of guys would be like, okay, whatever, and go for it. John went nuts. John went absolutely nuts. He's like, what are you doing? Get out of the bathroom. I'm having a shower. What do you think you're doing? Get out. And she's like, bang, lost face, huge mistake. Gets out of the shower. She didn't, get, didn't go in the shower, but yeah, out of the bathroom, puts her clothes on. He finishes his shower, puts his uh, whatever clothes on and comes out. And she sat crying in the lounge on the sofa. And he's like, triple X. Get the hell out, you're fired. Puts his hand in his pocket, gets her money, gives her money and said, get out, I'm not interested. And fires her. Off she goes, grabs the money, grabs her stuff, bang, gone. You didn't expect that, did you? I didn't really, but apparently he fired her and kicked her, her ass right out of the bungalow. And that cheesed him right off. Um, later on, he's back up to the bar with the boys and he tells them what happened. And they're all, again, they're just ripping into him. You know, it was inevitable. This was possibly going to happen. Well, it was, it was inevitable it was going to happen. You know, it's just one of those things. She took a fancy to you. She took a gamble and it didn't work. And he said, now I've got no cleaner housekeeper. And he overpaid her anyway every time. So maybe he learned his lesson. And he said, now I've got to start all again the search for a cleaner. He said, oh, I just can't believe what happened, he said. And they went, well, it's normal. It happens. <laughs> he fired her. Wow. Man of morals. Good man. Next day. Yeah, I'd have fired her as well, wouldn't you, Coca? Next day, exercise in the morning, see Jim. Let's see at two o'clock. And uh, two o'clock come, took his bike again, went up to that place he was at before. And then they, she turned up, they walked literally 200 meters down the road, slightly down the hill. And uh, there's another restaurant, Thai restaurant, cafe, um, did foreign food and Thai food, so all good. And then she starts quizzing him about uh, what food he eats. And he's like, well, I'm new to Thailand. He said, I don't really know much about Thai food. I've tried bits and pieces. He said, I just need to get used to it, I suppose. And she said, oh, that's excellent. He said, I love cooking. Um, maybe you could come and visit me at my home. Um, I can try cooking some Thai dishes and variants and cook for you and see how you get on with all the foods. This is brilliant. He said, absolutely, yes, please, would love to. And she's like, okay. Anyway, they had some food there, getting chatted away. That was a bit bit quick, her inviting him, but she had, you know, good intentions. It is just for food, and to try them out with different food. You want food, Coco, do you? You're hungry. Good as gold, you yeah, know, nice offer. So, he said, well, when would you like to do this? He said, uh, and she said, well, tomorrow night. She said, what would do? If you come here on your bike, um, I'll meet you and then I'll take you to my condo because it's tucked away. You might not find it. He said, brilliant. And she said, about half six, six thirty in the evening. He said, okay. And uh, she said, what are you doing today? He said, oh, I've got to find a new cleaner. She said, oh, have you lost your cleaner? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I got rid of her. Um, 
And he said, I'll find a new one. It's, uh, don't know what to do. She says, oh, well, good luck with that. Thinking maybe he had a big house that he needs cleaning. Not sort of eight square metre bungalow. Anyway, they arranged next night. Off he went, back home, and he's like, right. Up to his bar with the boys. There's no one there. So then he rings his friend in Patio, the one that helped before, said, look, told him what happened. And his friend's like laughing. He said, how do I find another cleaner? Um, and his friend said, look, I'll ask my partner and we'll ask around. I'll ring you back, see if we can find someone for you. I said, great. Never heard anything. Rest of the day. And he's just chilling. So he's got into a routine every day. He's doing a walk. He's been meeting Jim a couple of times. You can see everything that's happened. It's all pretty normal stuff. Nothing really exciting. He's not bothering going into Patea at night anymore. He's just like not interested. Drinking at the pub is okay. He has a couple of beers every night and it's not too bad. Next night. Goes off, meets Jum, and she takes him to her condo. And she's in one of the high-rise condos that overlooks the water, the front, on that hill. Quite a nice one, by all accounts. She guides him there, and he follows her. She's on the bike. Goes into this car park. She takes him um, up to the condo. And she's quite high up, and it's quite high a condo. And it's a gorgeous condo. It's two-bedroom, it's big. It's got a beautiful two balconies and he's like, wow, this is absolutely amazing place. And she said, yeah, yeah, it's not too bad running costs of this. It's a nice view and uh, I like it. Been here quite a few years. And he said, did you buy it when you were with your husband or um, afterwards? And she said, no, afterwards I bought it. I've lived here on my own for quite a few years. And uh, yeah, I do like it here. Anyway, she's sort of, it's got an open plan kitchen lounge and she's off, she goes into the kitchen and she's asking him, you know, favorite meats, talking food. And she just throws together a choice of two or three Thai dishes, beautiful dishes apparently, and he loved them all. Um, and he's like, I don't know about the spices, I can't figure out this. He says, I think I'll be all right with most spices. And she's, they have the food. And then she's like, well, what you can do is you can try a little bit hotter each time or make a separate dishes. Um, do you like seafood? And he's like, yeah, yeah. She said, how about we go to a seafood restaurant? Try that. She says, I love going out eating. And he's like, and they're just getting on really well. She's the perfect host. She's the perfect woman to meet in his position. She is 25 years younger, very pretty. Why is she, he couldn't ask her, but why is he, she happy being around him with that age difference? They've not, she's not hinted anything, he's not hinted anything about, you know, any sort of relationship, but she seems very comfortable with him. And they get talking, you know, about, she's asking me, has he got girlfriends and things? And and he's like, not really, no, never tried. Oh. Hiya. Mm -hmm. And... She's like, I didn't. I tried one boyfriend, but it was a waste of time. Really no good at all. So, not much of a history. Anyway, out of the blue, this conversation, they started talking about age. And, um, I don't know why he had the guts or how he did it, but he, he said to her, he said, you know, he's 68, he said, uh, and you're 43 or 44, whatever it is. And he said, I find it so different that I can socialise with someone of your age compared to my age. And she bounces back. Older men are more mature. Oh, by the way, her English is perfect. Perfect. Older men are more mature and easier to trust quite quickly you can weigh up somebody 
and I feel very comfortable, very, very comfortable with you. You're polite, your manners, and you are a gentleman, and that's very apparent. And he's like, well, oh, thank you. And he said, and you're a, a very mature lady. He said, your English is perfect. Your, again, mannerisms all right. You're absolutely amazing. Anyway, they kept throwing compliments backwards and forwards to each other. And then she suddenly, just out of the blue, you know, they've seen each other, I don't know, a few, four times, a handful of times. She actually throws it out of the blue. She says, I miss sex. Did she use that word? I'm not sure, but she's phrased it in such a way. Um... <laughs> it's been so long. She says, I do miss that. So maybe I am looking for some partner that I could enjoy a bit of that. And he's, you know, his gob's fallen open, his chin's hit the table. And he's like, I he said, I, I, and he stuttered. And she said, do you miss it? He said, well, I hadn't really thought about it, he said, after losing my, you know, my family. Um, I hadn't really thought about it, he said, it's not something that's been big in my life. Um, he said, I suppose so, he said, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, now we'll leave it there, because this is getting into a sexual conversation now. Oh, I need a coffee getting your mind in the right place for you. I miss sex. Oh. Hmm. Too good to be true, surely. Take care. I'll see you on the next episode.